What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're going to continue our discussion on uh, the basics of dot files by talking about how to create a dot files folder. So if you've never done this before, then today we're going to give you a, a brief walkthrough about how you can create your dot files folder and get it ready for doing some of the other things that we talked about in the basics of dot files video. Uh, like uh, posting your uh, configuration to GitHub and uh, lots of other things like that. So let's just get started with the basics of how to create a dot files folder. So uh, first of all, first of all, what we want to do is create the folder in the right location so that it's easier to manage your configuration files in one place. Uh, then we want to move some configuration files into it from our existing system config and then link them back to the original location. So basically what we're trying to do is put all of our configuration files that we want to uh, retain into a single folder and then link to them from the original places where they existed on the hard drive or in your home folder so that the programs that are looking for them can find them. And then we want to verify that it works just to make sure we didn't break anything with our configuration. So we're just going to follow these steps today to get a basic dot files folder set up. Uh, so first of all, what we want to do is create our dot files folder. And I recommend creating a folder of some type uh, inside of your home directory directly at the root of your home directory and not somewhere else because uh, it will be easier for tools like GNU Sto and some of the other dot files management tools to uh, to manage your dot files that way. Probably some of the other ones are more resilient to dealing with uh, nested folder paths for your dot files repository. But at least in my case, I like to just have a dot dot files folder, which sounds a little bit redundant. I like to have a folder named dot dot files inside of my home directory that I can get to very easily whenever I'm trying to get to my dot files folder. So uh, since we're on GNU Linux, uh, I'm going to use uh, make dir, the make dir command inside of my uh, other machine that I'm trying this with. I'll tell you about that in a second. So I'm going to use make dir. Uh, dot files uh, in my home folder. So um, I am using an Ubuntu 2004 VM for the purpose of running through this demo, just to have a more conventional configuration and uh, have something clean to start with. Uh, you can also follow these instructions on Mac OS. A lot of the same commands will apply. A lot of the same reasoning will apply. And on Windows, I'm also going to tell you the, the equivalent things that you would do on Windows, though this process isn't necessarily as easy on Windows because many programs that you want to configure don't have their uh, configuration files either in a textual format or in a place where it's easy to manage them. So uh, you'll be able to do it with some things in Windows, but not everything. So I'll, I'll try to tell you some tips on that uh, as we go along. So here I have created my brand new dot files folder right now. It is uh, it's empty, as you can see, because we just created it. But we're going to populate that with some files. Uh, so let's go ahead and whoops, I think I got there we go. All right. So what we need to do at this point is to take our existing configuration files for things that we care about and then move it into this dot files folder. So I'm an Emacs user. So I have a dot Emacs dot D folder inside of my uh, home directory. I definitely want to move that over. I may also want to move over the configuration for my uh, shell. In this case, uh, Ubuntu starts me off with a bash shell. So I'm just going to copy over the bash profile for my bash shell into the dot files configuration. Uh, and then I also use a program called MPV for watching videos. So I'm going to use that as, as an example for having a uh, configuration file or set of files with a nested folder layout moved into our dot files repo, just as a way to show you how that works. So uh, one tip that I have for you here is basically try to mirror the structure of your home directory as much as possible whenever you're moving files into your dot files repo, because it will make it easier for tools like GNU Sto to replicate that structure whenever it tries to uh, mirror those files back into your home folder. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, move because we actually do want to move these original files. And for whatever reason, this is not uh, cooperating today, this uh, term mode. So let's see if I can get that to work. So move uh, .emacs.d. Let's see if this complains because I have Emacs open right now. Uh, OK, so I think I'm going to use a different terminal because this one is just not working for me right at the moment. Let's just use the built in terminal in uh, Ubuntu for now. OK, so I'm going to see if I can make the text a little bit bigger. There we go. So I'm going to move uh, .emacs.d into dot .files. And now if we look at that, we should see .emacs.d is now in, dot file, in the dot .files folder. Also, I am going to move my dot .bash profile. Uh, oh, let's see, bashrc. Let's move bashrc into the dot .files folder. Uh, the bash history. 
we do not want to sync across our machines, so I'm not going to bother trying to put uh, bash history in that folder. We'll just let it be as it normally is. Uh, bash logout. I don't even know what's in bash logout. Let's see what that says. Uh, if you're hearing this pinging noise, I apologize. That's what Ubuntu wants to do by default. Okay, so it just does some kind of folder uh, uh, terminal clearing, so I don't really care about that too much. Um, let's see, what else is interesting that we might want to move over? Anything else? Oh, dot profile. Let's see, what's in our uh, dot profile file? Okay, there's some stuff in here, but I don't know if we want to move this because it seems to be very specific to Ubuntu. So let's just leave that there for now. I do keep a dot profile in my dot files repo though. All right, so uh, let's see. Also, we have our .config folder. And as I mentioned in the uh, previous episode, uh, .config is a very common place for applications to store the configuration in Linux now. So you'll probably see a lot of stuff in that folder. Right now, if you look inside of .config, you'll see there's a lot of things related to GNOME and other app applications related to GNOME. We definitely don't want to take all this stuff and put it into our .files repo because this is stuff that the distribution that we're using is configuring, and we really don't want to replicate that very much. I mean, there's there may be parts of the parts of this that you do want to replicate and that's sort of up to you to decide but in my case i'm not going to try to replicate any of this uh, i will try to replicate the mpv configuration though so what i'm going to do is move that mpv folder uh let's see dot config slash mpv i'm going to move that to uh dot files actually what i want to do though before i do that i need to create a config folder inside of um dot, dot config folder inside of my dot files repo so what, what i'm going to do is create dot dot files slash dot config and then I'm going to look at dot files, make sure it's there as we expect. Okay, so we have a dot config folder. Now I'm going to move dot config slash mpv to dot dot files dot config. And then now if we check out the dot config folder in our dot files, we'll see that mpv is now there. And then all the files that are supposed to be there are there. So uh, the reason why we need to do this is so that we can make sure that the the folder structure of the config folder is going to be replicated correctly if we do any automatic syncing of our uh, config files over to our home directory but for the purpose of this episode we're going to do things a little bit more manually just to see what that process looks like all right so uh now what we're going to do is create symbolic links to the ori original config file location so now that we've moved these files we need to we need to make the tools that use them aware of where they are and we can do this through a feature of the file system called symbolic links so what this really means is we have our files in an, in a real location inside of our dot dot files folder and we need to uh make a tool look for them in a different place but still be able to find them so a symbolic link is like a pointer basically saying okay so you're looking for a file at the uh home directory slash dot bash rc well that file is actually in the dot dot file slash dot bash rc file so read it from there instead so basically what we're going to do is use the ln command to create a symbolic link that accomplishes this to, to basically tell the program oh this file is somewhere else so the syntax for that is here it's ln dash sf uh, you are basically telling it the original file location and then the the location where the link should be created this works for both directories and for individual files uh, if you're like me you always forget every single time which which one goes first whenever you're using ln sf uh, so you, it's always the target file first and then the the place where the link gets created next so we're going to do this for all the things that we just moved over. So let me jump into the terminal one more time. And I'm going to go into uh, our, let's see, we're already in home directory. So I'm going to use lnsf. Uh, our original location is dot, dot file slash dot emacs dot d. But I want to put that into the dot emacs dot d folder. So now if I look at my home folder, I can see that uh, dot emacs dot d is there. I'm not sure why bash isn't showing me that there is a link there. But oh, you know what? That folder probably exists. Let's see. So this is also a problem that you might run into where um, if for some reason a program happens to write to that folder location after you've already moved it, that folder will reappear. And then when you try to do a symbolic link, it's going to create it inside of the folder that got recreated. So watch what happens right now. I'm going to use the LSAL and look at the contents of the home slash emacs.d folder. And we're going to see the symbolic link actually got created under this folder. So be aware that this is a possibility. Uh, I'm going to just delete that whole emacs.d folder now. And then I'm going to create the symbolic link one more time. Um, it's right there. And then let's see, no such file directory. 
that's probably the, the mistake I made is a slash at the end. So I took the slash off. And now if I were to do lsal.emax.d, we'll see that it actually is pointing to that folder in dot files. Is that correct? I try to CD into it. Okay, so it does work. All right, so so that is working correctly right now. Um, and to verify, to make sure that uh, we can load Emacs correctly with our config again, I'm just gonna start up Emacs and make sure that uh, it loads correctly. All right, so it seems to be loading my configuration, which is a good sign. Uh, so that that one did work. And now we can do the same thing for our bash RC. So LN, let's see, we had the bash RC here. It's not here anymore. I can do LN SF dot file slash dot bash RC and then put it to bash RC. And then similarly for MPV, let's make sure that there's no folder already there for MPV and config. So we moved it. Okay, it's not there. So let's use LN dash SF dot dot files dot config mpv what we want to do here is link the entire mpv folder to uh, the dot config folder so that we don't have to do each individual file so let's try that really quick so i'm going to use uh, dot config here and this should create that link inside of dot config so if you use lsal dash or dot config now we see that mpv is here and it's pointing to our dot files folder uh, and we can verify by running mpv that the configuration gets loaded because basically my config just says move the window up to the top right hand corner of the screen. So it seems that our dot files folder is working. If we look inside of our dot files folder now, we can see that we have uh, this dot config dot emacs dot d and dot bash rc files represented here. And those are being linked back to their original locations so that the tools that use them can pick them up. So uh, for Windows users, if you want to do symbolic links, there's a you don't have the ln command on on Windows. What you have to use instead is something called make link, and that is going to create junctions. Basically, a junction is basically a, a symbolic link in Windows terminology. There's another concept of linking in Windows that actually does the wrong thing and won't work correctly. So don't use that. You use these specific invocations of make link to get it to work correctly on Windows. So. Uh, make link dash H capital H does it for individual files and make link dash J capital J use does it for directories. Um, so if you follow the examples that I have here, you should be able to do this to do the same thing on Windows. But note that you need to be running in an elevated command prompt before this is going to work because make link apparently requires admin permissions to be able to create a junction point on the file system. Uh, so to do that, whenever you try to run command.exe in Windows or type in CMD in the start menu and you see the icon for the command prompt, right click it, click run on run as administrator. And then in that console, you should be able to create those links. After that point, I think everything works as normal. and You don't have to worry about using those folders. It's just that you can only create a junction uh, as an administrator. The other thing to note is that the, the order of the parameters is swapped for make link compared to LN. Uh, the first uh, item that you put in as a parameter here is the name of the link. And the second item is the original location that you're linking to. So just keep that in mind as well. All right. So the downside of using symbolic links is that it's kind of a pain to have to go and create those symbolic links whenever you want to, um, uh, set up your dot files on another machine. So you do it the first time. It's all great. You know, you, you set up your dot files on, on your machine where you're starting to, to make this work. Uh, you, you put the dot files in the right folder. Uh, you, you set up symbolic links on this machine. You commit them to Git. you push them to GitHub or some other repository, and then you want to sync it to another machine. And then as soon as you sync it, you remember, God, I got to like go create all those symbolic links again. I don't remember which links that I created and, and how I did it. Well, there are a few ways to manage this. One is just to create your own script that will take care of creating creating all the links for you. But that's still another thing that you have to maintain yourself. And that's kind of a pain. So it's much better to use a tool that's geared for this purpose that will manage these sim symbolic links for you. And one tool that I use personally is called GNU Stow for that purpose. We're not going to cover that in this episode because I want to keep it short, but we are going to talk about it uh, in probably the next episode or two. Um, there are other tools also that are very good for this uh, that we'll cover in future videos as well. But just know that for now, you, you should get used to the idea of using symbolic links, but realize that it's not going to be so much of a pain to manage this going forward. In fact, you probably won't have to ever create a similar symbolic link if you don't want to. So uh, that's that's a, a, an upside of the downside, I suppose you could say. OK, so now that we have a dot files folder, the next step is to start managing it with Git. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next episode next week. We're going to talk about how to uh, create a Git repository, commit your dot files to it, 
uh, then how to sync those dot files to a uh, Git forge like GitHub or GitLab, etc., so that you can have them sync between your machines and also share them with other, other people. So hopefully this was useful to you as a getting started on how to create your dot files folder. And then we're going to use this as the basis for the things that we do next in the series. So uh, finally, I would just like to thank my sponsors. These people have decided to to sponsor the work that I do creating these videos, and I'm very appreciative for uh, for them doing this. I mean, I think it's great that uh, people are, are enthusiastic about uh, these videos and, and want to help. So if you are interested in supporting what I'm doing, uh, please check the two links in the description below. I'm on both GitHub sponsors and Patreon. I also have a link to uh, PayPal if you want to do a one-time donation. Uh, so uh, with, with that said, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, remember to click subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever the next video comes out. Until then, happy hacking. Thanks a lot.